All right, today we're gonna do some science. It's gonna be fun. Well, as a lot of you know, I have been going through, uh, I've been going through, I've been really slowly going through this book here, and you can't read it because my printer's got all, it's all messed up. The Complete Handbook, The Complete Casting Handbook, Metal Casting Processes, Metallurgy Techniques and Design, Second Edition by Professor John Campbell. There it is. And I've been going through that, and I've been reading through the 10 rules, and I... As I was reading through the 10 rules, of course, you start reading them, and they start in chapter 10. And they refer you back to everything back in chapter 1, and chapter 2, and chapter 3, and chapter... <laughs> so, you can't just start in chapter 10 and read the 10 rules. you got to go back and read all this other stuff. Well, chapter 3 is on flow. And there was a picture in there that caught my eye, uh, because, you know, I look at the pictures when I read. I don't look at the words. And I wanted to kind of, uh, I wanted, I thought this would be a cool experiment. So we're going to try it today. Let me, let me take you over to the bench here and we'll, I'll draw it up and show you what, uh, what the book shows and what they kind of talk about to the best of my ability. All right. So let's get over to the bench. All right. So chapter three is on flow and, uh, and specifically section three dash three is on extended flow. I can talk faster than write. And that chapter, chapter three, talks about a number of things in the early part of the chapter about how you can get your metal to flow better. Uh, the first thing that they talk about is basically cleaning your metal. And what he's doing there is he's cleaning it of oxides, and he talks about techniques for doing that. And a lot of the, uh, you know, pluses and minuses, if you have oxides in your metal, what kind of things can happen, what sort of bad things can happen. So, and then the removal of those oxides, how that helps. The other, another thing they talk about doing in the book is, you know, heating the mold. It seems kind of simple to me, but um, if you think about it, a cold mold is not going to flow as well as a warm mold, right? The metal is going to go into the cold. It's going to cool off quicker. It's not going to flow as good. So heating the mold is a, uh, a way to improve flow. And then finally, the third thing they talk about is a coating. All right, so coating the mold with a, um, a film that will improve flow, that will allow that to, uh, you know, flow to, it, it will flow to flow better, I guess. <laughs> anyway, coating things, right? So here's three things that are going to be tough for a guy like me in my garage to do. Now, granted, I could do some of this stuff. If I went out and bought the chemicals and I used the right kind of metal, I could definitely get cleaner metal and I could definitely get a better flow based on that. Um, heating the molds, I don't know, you know, that may be possible, but with Petrobond, man, what I found is when you heat it up, it tends to lose its uh, viscosity and it tends to just kind of start falling apart. So, I don't know that heating is possible with an oil-based sand. That would be an interesting thing to know. Coating, I, you know, I don't have any way, I don't have any coating, I don't have any sprays that I can put on this stuff, and I don't know how the spray would react with, again, an oil-based sand. So uh, those are all fine, well and good, right? Well, as you get uh, further into the chapter, uh, he starts talking about extending the, the fluidity through another method. And uh, this is something I definitely can do, and I'm gonna, we're going to try it today. So the first thing he talks about in there is he's, if, if you're pouring a sort of a, a wide, thin section of, um, uh, of a mold, as your metal comes in, if let's say it's coming in this direction here, uh, it will come in and it will start to flow out to the sides as it's flowing out the cooler metal can go, can go out to the sides and the hot metal, the warm metal will continue to flow so up the center and you get this sort of nat, this sort of good natural thing happening with your, uh, your metal. Now another thing that he talks about can happen uh, and, and I guess it's in a similar situation is if you're, you're again, you're pouring in a, uh, a wide thin um, scenario, it can come in and start pouring in. Well, it might come over here and get frozen. And then it might come back, it might, 
you know, flow over here. And you can imagine this sort of thing happening. And then that piece comes off and it has to come back in. And that is um, due to an oxide tube, he calls it, flowing over here and then breaking off and then backfilling back into the normal flow, uh, at which point you end up with a bifilm, uh, I think they call bi, oh golly, I'll write it in the bottom, bifilled weld or something like that. I'll write the right term. Anyway, this is not, this is no bueno, no good. You don't want this to happen to you, but that can happen uh, if you're not controlling the flow well. And here's what we're going to try today. So there's a, when you get later in the book, uh, later in that chapter, in that section 3-3, he talks about another guy, uh, Hira, uh, Hira, Hirasuka. Hirasuka. Uh, back in 1998, he and his colleagues came up with a test and a, uh, a theory, and I guess they, 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 they proved it out. It was pretty interesting. So the idea was if I have a long, thin thing, and they were using cast iron, and they were trying to maintain the gray, machinable um, grain instead of the white, hardened, cold grain that you might get. And so they were trying to figure out ways to extend that flow and keep more gray material in the, uh, in the cast iron. Well, what he shows is, in the book, is if you start filling this direction, you might get, it might come in and fill, and you might get, you know, it, where it'll just basically go as far as it can go and then it'll freeze up and that's it, okay? So um, not a bad thing happening, but you didn't make it all the way to the end and you didn't maybe get as much material as you would have liked to have. They did something which I thought was fascinating and we're going to try this today. We're going to try both these things. So they took, a, again, a long thin piece and this is basically, his test was three millimeters by 60 millimeters by whatever length we're going to do fairly whatever my cast my flask will hold then they brought in things that look like this across the bottom and so those channels as it were uh, will come across and what will happen is is the metal is just coming in and it's spreading out it's kind of forming this nice dome shape hopefully that leading edge which is cooler will fall off into these channels, warm metal will be allowed to will will allow to uh, will be allowed to I guess continue to flow. And as it cools off again, boom! It that cold leading edge will go down into the channel, and so forth. And they were able to extend significantly extend the flow from here to here by putting these channels in the bottom. So that's what we're going to build today. We're going to build up a mold that can allow us to do that. Um, I've got some material that I think is this is essentially an eighth inch, and this is two and three eighths inches for those of us here in the backwards United States. So I've got some material that's eighth inch, and I'm going to cut it to two and three eighths wide, and however long I can get it. I'm also going to cut some out of wood. I'm going to make some of these guys, and I'm also, we're going to, we're going to build out a pattern that looks like this. So in my flask, I'm going to put one of these one of these things here and another one here. We will, I'm going to flow in, this is probably going to be a huge mistake, but I'm going to do it this way. We're going to take our runner across the, the, um, uh, the, the drag. I'm thinking, well, I've got two choices here. I can build a gate that comes in this direction so that it's a solid piece, it's exactly the same size, and I can center this so that I don't have, you know, well, you know, you filled this thing up and it was, it was biased towards one side or the other. We're going to try to keep this, actually this runner will come extend down through here. So I can either gate it like this, or I can gate it kind of like that. And maybe I'll go this way so we have the direction of the flow is coming into the mold this direction. So I'll try to build that out. But, um, that's what we're going to build in our thing. We're going to pour it, and we're going to look at one with those channels in it and one without, and we're going to compare the difference. So let's get over the table saw and get busy. All right, well, in the interest of uh, brevity, <laughs> I went ahead and went over the table saw without you. So what we've got in here now are two pieces. These are uh, 60 by 22. I wrote on yeah, 60 millimeter by 220 millimeter. 
is how big uh, this piece is and this other piece and they are three millimeters thick uh, So they're going to sit in here into the drag just like this We'll get them get them as straight and as even as I can make this as fair as possible I've got a runner Which is going to sit out here And the sprue will dump into that so I'm going to put the sprue coming in probably here it will run back and then once we get the cope on there this is going to be my gating system it's going to sit basically like so uh, on the other side of these guys so it'll be sitting in there like that and they're this way I could get to the same size or the same length they're the same they're going to sit in the same location hopefully we can make all this as even as possible as far as a test so we're going to here's the idea we're going to try to basically do both these pores at once because that way I have the same temperature, the same metal, the same consistency, everything going forward. And we can test to see if this piece will flow as far as this piece. I can't wait. Let me get it rammed up. That, but that's the idea. All right, there we are. That's pretty good. I think we're, we're as close as I'm going to get. I'm going to gate it right like that. Uh, as far as the sprue. Screw's going to come in right here. I'm just going to vent it right off the end, just like that. <clears throat> We're going to cut our basin in as close to the edge as I can get it. Uh, well, clearly not the best, probably the worst <laughs> mold I've ever made, but uh, I'm not even going to worry about a test fit. All right, let's pour this bad boy and see what happens. Hey, here we go. Fascinating. I got metal all the way to the top here, and all I got is smoke down here. Fascinating. <laughs> We're going to call it cool enough and see what we got. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> who would have thought? Who would have thought that these guys who have devoted their lives to this, have studied it, who have done all sorts of analysis, who work, you know, doing this stuff, have written 1,500 page books, would know what they're talking about. <laughs> this, I am, I, this is amazing to me. I, uh, so we saw what happened, right? I had two pieces that were identical size, had them vented identically on the ends. I, I tried my very best to try to get them to be equal in all respects as far as how the metal would flow into them. Um, you know, there's really, they were identical, as, as identical as I could make them be. And look what happened. <laughs> I got to show, okay, I'm going to move right here. And then I'm going to put over there, I guess, I'm going to put the picture up. I'm going to put these, I'm going to show this to you here. I'm going to show it to you like, I guess I'll show it to you like that so you can see it. And then I'm going to show you, then there's the picture. Look at the picture. I tell you, this is like identical. <laughs> this is amazing to me. And here's the other thing that's cool. So you see what's happening here. Now, I'm, all right, now this is me speculating. This is me. I don't know what I'm talking about, okay? But, when I look at this right here, I'm going to show you another picture right over here. And it talks about uh, an oxide flow and the, uh, coming, forming outside the channel and then doubling back on itself and coming back in. 
And I'll tell you what, man, that sure looks like something happened there. I got a buy something edge thing there, buy film, maybe, I don't know. But um, this looks to me like the start of this picture right here, where it starts to flow in and it can break off and fill around, um, causing problems. I don't know that you can tell, you can judge by the color of the oil and stuff on here, what's going on with flow, uh, but they do look very different, don't they? This looks, this one doesn't have the same stuff going on that this one does. And uh, it's interesting to me that it's on both sides. So I'm not sure what this is about here, if this is a metal thing or if this is an oil thing, but how cool, <laughs> how cool. Here's another thing that's cool. You see how big this sprue is? You see that sprue right there? You see that thing? Look how far I poured an eighth inch plate. Single pour, single tiny sprue gating and all this stuff that goes on here. I'm telling you, you don't need the big old sprue like that to get this stuff full. All right, here's the deal. Um, now what? What's a guy to me, like me going to do with the stuff like this hanging off the bottom of the plate that he needed? I mean, I don't have a mill. I don't have a way of machining this stuff off. So this is cool, but I'm not sure what it does for me. <laughs> so... I guess, I, I guess what it tells me is if I need to pour a long, flat distance, thin, wide, I'm just going to have to do something like this to uh, make it work. I don't know. Um, how cool is this? <laughs> All right. There was an exciting experience. I had no idea. I had no idea how this was going to turn out when I started. I'm telling you the truth. I fully expected both of them to fill all the way down. Um, and me look at it and go, oh, well, <laughs> didn't mean anything, but amazing. Here's the book again. Let me, there it is. Complete casting handbook, metal casting processes, metallurgy techniques and design, second edition. Emeritus Professor of Casting Technology, Department of Metallurgy and Materials, University of Birmingham, UK, John Campbell, out of his book. Chapter three, you can look it up yourself. Look it up, chapter three, this is three, section 3-3, three three, extending flow. You'll see these pictures, you know I'm not making stuff up. I'm, I'm unbelievable. <laughs> you guys have a great, great day.